800. I hear noise. 950. Turn it off. Oh. Hi, I'm George and welcome to part 26 of the Horizon series. Now this week we're going to pressure test this pressure chamber uh, to see if we can get it up to our target pressure. Now the other thing we have to do is build a frame around it uh, to hold it in place because the nozzle retention mechanism is quite different. So let's jump straight into it. We're going to be using the launch control box for these tests, but we're setting it up for manual operation rather than by using the computer as we want really fine control because the pressure will climb pretty quickly when it's all full of water. We're just running a long pressure hose to the test stand. So let's start by building the test stand for the pressure chamber. We need a way to keep the pressure chamber on the nozzle seat as the booster segments themselves don't have individual retaining mechanisms. They'll be held down by the central staging mechanism. We're just making the frame from some 40mm steel angle. At full pressure, there'll be about 200 kilos or 2000 newtons of force trying to push the nozzle seat out. And here's the finished stand. Next we fill up the pressure chamber completely with water and add the nozzle seat adapter. This then gets inserted into the frame and the air supply is hooked up as well. Uh, this is our setup. We're safely tucked behind the wall with the pressure chamber around the corner. With cameras rolling, it's time to start the test. The pressure quickly jumps up to 150 psi. We hold it there and go and inspect the pressure chamber to see if there are any obvious leaks. After this, as we increase the pressure further, we won't be able to go anywhere near it. With nothing obvious to see, we continue to increase the pressure. 500, 800, 850. At just over 900 psi, the pressure chamber springs a couple of small leaks in the end cap wall. Yeah, I think we sprang a leak. Close it off, yep. And here it is again from the other side. We turn the air off and let the pressure out before we can approach it. At this point there's only a couple of hundred psi left. Straight from the side. You can see that the leak didn't come directly through the wall, but snaked its way under the outer fiberglass layer before it came out. We can also see there was a bit of a leak around the nozzle. We'll cover this a little later. I think we had something telling us that this was a bit of a turkey of a pressure chamber. So that wasn't an ideal result, but that's obviously why we do these tests. Now the good part is it didn't fail in a major way. It only had a little leak in it. Um, now what we think happened was that the inner fiberglass lining of the end cap had uh, delaminated and then the uh, carbon fiber may have had a few small holes through it and then that actually caused the leak. Now one of the reasons why it could have delaminated was because uh, I did not sand that inside that smooth surface and it also may have had some mold release on it um, so that wouldn't have helped either. Uh, so next time obviously we've learned our lesson is that surface has got to be prepared properly. So this leak also gives us an opportunity to try and repair it. So if this ever happened on the big booster segment, we'll have a procedure in place to try and repair it. So let's try that repair and we'll do another pressure test. We took the test setup inside and hooked it up to a low pressure supply. Here we're using around 40 psi. A bit of soapy water reveals where the actual leaks are. There were three tiny holes that we found. For the repair, we cut out 20 of these fiberglass gauze. We mask off the holes. 
and then sand the whole end cap. Next we hook up the shop vacuum cleaner to the nozzle hoping it would create a bit of a vacuum inside the pressure chamber. Then adding the epoxy over the holes, we are hoping that some of the epoxy will make its way into the holes themselves. Next we add a couple of small patches over the actual holes. Then we proceed to cover the entire end cap in five layers of fiberglass. Patching leaks like this over the outside is less than ideal and we didn't give it much of a chance of working, but we wanted to try it anyway. We wanted to repair this test pressure chamber as the next test will be to attach the staging mechanism bracket to the side and see if it can handle the loads when pressurized. We let it cure for three days and here it is ready. So let's do another pressure test. Again we filled up the pressure chamber with water and this time used a couple of o-rings on the nozzle adapter. We added a couple of legs to the test stand so we could put it on its side and we could film it from both sides. We've set up a number of cameras to film the experiment. We've got the GoPro on one side and the normal camera from the other side. Okay, time to pressurize it. Stop. That's 200. 300, 400. Whoops, we forgot to tighten the high pressure hose into the launcher itself and the o-ring popped out. The quick fix was to actually tighten the hose and we were ready to continue with the test. It's just blowing the water back into the pressure chamber. So here we are approaching about 800 psi and all's looking good. 800, I hear noise. As the test progressed and we I heard a bit of a noise and as you I can see we had a major okay. leak. 950, turn it off. off. You can see that the air came through uh, and it made its way under the outermost fiberglass layer and then it basically popped off. And here it is from the other side. Now let's see that in slow motion. You can see the air making its way under the outer fiberglass layer. Although this layer has cracked, the pressure chamber is still holding around 900 psi at this point. If we toggle back and forth from 0 psi to 900, you can see the water make its way under the entire patch we just applied. It then finds its way out under the thinner layer on the body. The patch was still holding at around 800 psi. We can see the white frothy water coming out near the nozzle. We suspect this isn't an o-ring failure, rather it's likely leaking between the metal nozzle and the carbon fibre sleeve. We think we have a way to stop that as well, and you'll see that next time. And here's the nozzle leak from another angle. Okay, time to release the rest of the pressure and finish the test. So it looks like the repair didn't quite work and we weren't quite expecting it to work either, but it was worth a shot. 
Now we're going to build another test pressure chamber just to make sure that we can uh, build it properly. Now the really good news is, is the top end cap that uses identical materials and almost identical procedure worked just fine. There weren't any leaks and it held the pressure just fine. So we'll just repeat that uh, same process for the bottom end cap and that all should be good. So why do we have to do these tests again when we've already done them for the uh, sustainer that again used almost identical procedures? Well, we're going from a 60 millimeter diameter to 80 millimeters. And that means that the hoop stress within that wall is about 33% higher. Um, so because of the higher stress, we have to test everything again. And as we just saw, it didn't quite work. So anyway, I'm quite confident we'll get that all sorted. But in the next video, we're going to cover the actual flight hardware. We start making the long booster tubes uh, for the inner part of the walls. Um, those weren't affected by this test, so we can go ahead and make those. And then we'll just make the few adjustments for the uh, end caps to seal those up properly. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Okay, let's depressurize. Is it closed?